now we're back to learning Midjourney. Let me show you how you can recreate such a zoom GIF using Midjourney and a video editor. I've used a simple prompt, cyborg, detailed, hyper realistic, and I made the aspect ratio 16 by 9. Let us do that once more so that you know what I did from the start. Now let me jump to Premiere Pro, this is the video editor that I've used. Here was the first image that I've created. I right click on it, scale to frame size. This was the original upscale. And then I've zoomed out. I'm going to make this a shorter clip, so I only zoomed out three times. And I've upscaled one of the variations. So let me right click on them, scale to frame size as well. You can see it's the same cyborg image, but it's zoomed out with 2x for every upscale. If we go back to Discord, here's our new one. Let's just use number two. So upscale this. And once it's upscaled, you want to zoom out with 2x. If you want to adjust the background, use the custom zoom. Definitely keep the aspect ratio in the zoom level. And you may want to add futuristic cars in the background, something like this. Let me submit it. And while it does, we'll get back to Premiere Pro. And we'll work on this example. You want to arrange that in such a way that your highest zoom is number one in my case at the first position and then number two, three, four. So every time you zoom out, you want to have it placed at the end of your clip. Let me upscale number three here. And our futuristic cast background is also done. So this is a zoom without cars, without adding something to the prompt. And here are cars, if you want something in the background that's specific, use the custom zoom. And then again, zoom out to X or use the custom zoom and add something. This is the process to create these four images. You can see it in my mid-journey profile. It's the same cyborg, just zoomed out three times. You want to download this and then import it to Premiere Pro like I did. You could also do it for this one, but well, let me stick to the one that I've already have. Now comes the part where you have to know your ways around your video editor. I put one to top, then two, three, and four. Select number one. You need your effect controls in Premiere Pro. If you can't find them, go to Windows. Select Scale. You need to click on the clock next to it to start the animation. Once again, as a reminder, everything, so all of these four clips are scaled to frame size. You have to do that before you do anything else. Now get to the start position right here. And you want to start your animation here, then go to the end. Let me make it 50. In this case, we have an effect that makes the image smaller than our frame. Therefore, I've started with 200. So scale it actually up and then I went down to 100. Now we have the effect that we want. For the second image, same. We go to start, 200, start the animation, go to end, make it 100. Make it for 3 and 4 and for, I don't know how many you want to use, but potentially you could use hundreds here. It's always 200 at the start, 100 at the end. But before you recreate it, hold on. I'm going to show you something. If we run it now, we have the effect.
but right here where the second starts or where the clip below the first one starts you can see on the edges there's a little bit of an issue I was able to get around it well, let me first show you this in detail I used arrow keys right here this is due to mid journey so where the edges of your first upscaled video are the zoom out will be a little bit different to get around that go back to your animation and start actually with 220 and then go down to 110 Do that for all of your clips. So instead of 200 and 100, we use 220 and 110. And this is going to cut the edges out and give us a smooth transition. We don't have that issue anymore. Let us start again here. And now we've got that issue solved. You can see it right here. There's still a problem though when it comes to a little bit of these details. Let me show you what I mean in detail. I zoom to a transition between 2 and 3 right here and I use the arrow keys. And you can see it in the eye or in the face. It gets a little bit blurry when we change to the next upscaled image. And that's a mid-journey problem. So we would have it right here in the new one as well. And I haven't yet found a way to get fully around this. So when mid-journey upscales or when mid-journey zooms out, then it's going to lose a little bit of details and it's going to be visible when you do this zoom effect. You can fool the viewer by making the zoom very quick, but when you do that, you either have a very short clip or you need like 10 or 20 of these zoom levels in mid-journey created to have a longer clip, but it still will be there. So once again, I haven't yet found a way to get around it and I haven't seen anyone being able to do that. So this is as best as we can get for now. Here's the example that I've used for the intro. It's already nested. To be able to do that, select your four clips, right click, nest. You can double click on it and you will be in the nested group. We want to have a music clip. I hold Alt, copy it, then make the nested group as long as the music. Let me mute the music channel. We don't need the music. And if you now want to make it an in zoom, out zoom, kind of like an infinite effect, just right click on your nested group, speed and duration, and make it 200%. This should cut it in half. Then hold Alt. You will be able to drag a nested copy to the right. Right click on it, speed and duration, and reverse the speed. Place it right after the first nested group. And now we have a zoom in and here zoom out and you can chain this as often as you want to have this infinite effect. As I've said, this is as best as I can do it right now. If I find a way to get around this little blur effect and make these results even better, I'll make a video about it. But I hope that this video was already helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.